Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Connolly. <laughs> <laughs> Timing is perfect. I must ask you about that suit. I mean, what's a working class lad like you doing with a suit like that? It's, like a, it's a sort of substitute for tattoos. I'm frightened to get a tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend, John Byrne in Glasgow, he's an artist, calls himself Patrick. Did it for me. Behind, I think it's astonishing. I love it. I feel like a star. It's magic. You know? <laughs> I mentioned in my introduction that, in fact, you've just uh, been touring. And it's been a heck of a tour, hasn't it, for oh, you? Oh, what's amazing. Your, what's it like, the touring, though? I mean, is it sort of an interminable round of, of awful hotels? Yeah. And like that? Well, it really, it can be. But I, I, I'm a sort of a time-served loony. And when things get depressing, I really work at making it something else. But I would like to make a comment here about the decline of the English sausage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, really. Because, honest... These bre <laughs> the breakfasts I've been having are, have been okay in hotels, but the sausage itself, I mean, no matter what the chef does to it, it's just rubbish sausages. And the English sausage is a sort of fatter one than a Scottish banger. You know, we've got a sort of squib thing. That you get a, you get a, this fat, juicy-looking banger. And they're rubbish. They really are awful bad. You want to do something about that? And it, see, it puts me off for a whole day. And it sort of sticks around there, hangs around there. And you know, I keep thinking about it. The more I think about it, gee. Really? What, what about American sausages? Because you just come well, out of there. Well, I, I'm, when I'm in America, I, I eat all the trash and all those sweets that I used to see advertised in comics when I was a boy, you know. But I, I like America, and I'm a great fan of the freaky, silly side of it. All the souvenirs I buy are complete trash. You know, and I wear cowboy boots and things. And... Yeah. But the, the side of America that I find most bizarre is the, the television quiz show at seven in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in my bed, half drunk with a cheeseburger, watching <laughs> and my, cow my new cowboy boots on the pillow so I can... <laughs> I saw a show once, I'm, I kid you not. They have, it's like... Uh, they offer you uh, money. You, you've got the choice of taking the guy's money or taking what's behind the curtain. And all these lunatics go along and sit there and, and all, all the guests are picked from the audience. So they, they, they all wear ridiculous... <laughs> sorry, they all wear... <laughs> That's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> they wear really ridiculous outfits, so is the guy. They'll, they'll catch the fella's eye. So, <laughs> I swear this is true. Two chickens were standing there. <laughs> These people in chicken outfits. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a, a, man, a man and wife. They were big yellow chickens. <laughs> and the guy's offering them money. And I went, my God, what's happening? And he's away up about $4,000. He's saying, do you want the money or what's behind that curtain? And they're sort of muttering to each other, sort of clucking and scratching. <laughs> And he's mumble, mumble. He says, no, no, we want the prize behind it. And he opened it, and it was a cement mixer. <laughs> and, he's, and then I really got off. <laughs> I got so sad and depressed. The two chickens sort of wilted. Like. <laughs> and, they, and they had to go back to their seats, you know, with this silly thing on. And their cement mixer. <laughs> and I, I was trying to imagine them in, in the taxi. The two chickens sitting in the... <laughs> And I'm saying, you mug, I told you to take the money. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my America. Yeah. I've, I started in America very strangely. I went to play in Irish clubs, you know. I was playing to these geriatric Irish cowboys. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it was so bloody bizarre. I, I couldn't believe it. And the day I... I swear this is true. I got off the plane at half four in the afternoon, totally exhausted, and I waited a gig. And uh, I was on the stage at half past six. And it's, uh, so I've got my gear ready. And uh, there's nobody in the club. There's just those wee things that they use in America where we candle in it, a wee sort of nightlight thing. There's a sea of them. And uh, so I'm standing there myself. 
So I'm not going on the stage, and the guy comes along and says, hey, you've to start at half past six. I said, but there's nobody here. He said, this is America. Shh. And I went and I sang to these candles. <laughs> <laughs> I swear it's true. The bit that killed me, there was barmen in the place, and they weren't listening either. <laughs> <laughs> that was my introduction. I've loved it ever since. <laughs> But, but you get big crowds in America, don't you? Big audiences. Well, it's getting bigger and bigger all the time. Yeah. But uh, I, I get a lot of Scottish people. Scottish Americans are very strange. Are they? Oh, wow. You've got to see this. <laughs> Tartan carpets, you know. <laughs> yeah. You must come back to my house and it's like Rabbi Burns' cottage. See, <laughs> 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 where did you come from? He said, Glasgow. Yeah. Where did you? <laughs> it's all, oh, hi, the new. <laughs> and you're in California, they take you to the wee kirk among the heather. You know, I want to see places where Marlon Monroe was and stuff like that. Yeah. But David, I'm standing at this church in a graveyard. You know, it's very nice, right? <laughs> <laughs> I give in, what am I supposed to do? <laughs>